Welcome to part 5 of my new login and register tutorial series. This is the final part of the tutorial series and in this part we're going to fix the login function of the app. So let's quickly head over to the app. We've created a register request, now we just need to do the same and create a login request. They are very similar so we're just going to be copying and pasting a lot of stuff. So I just want you guys to copy basically everything in the register request file, copy that over to the login request and now change the constructor name and don't forget it has to extend string request now a few things to change we need to change this to login request URL rather than register request URL and then also we need to change this to head to the login.php file instead now when a user is logging in they don't need their name they only use their username and password so they don't need their age either so to create a login request you'd only need a username and a password and obviously the listener now in the parameter we only need to put the username now and the password and the a um, yeah just the username and the password and that is basically it for the login request class now head over to the login activity so we can start connecting everything up now we want to create a login request when the user actually clicks the login button so we have to create an onclick listener again so new you the onclick listener and now remember everything in here is what happens when the user clicks login so we want to create a login request and just call that login request new login request and now remember we need to get the username and the password that the user has entered and store it in a string. So final string username. And to get the username, we just do et username dot get text dot to string. And we do the same thing for the password, except now we get it from the password field. And now we can pass that over to the login request, the username and password. Because remember, the login request wants a username and password. Now we need to create a response listener just like we did for the register request. So to create a response listener, we just write response.listener. We want to create a string response listener. We'll give it a name. And to create the response listener, we write res new response listener and string. So this that's it, it's been created. Don't forget the semicolon. And now we can actually pass that to the login request. Now the login response listener is a bit more complicated than the register one. So just like before, we need to convert the response into a, a JSON object so we can work with it. And we do that by new JSON object and then we give it the response that we received, which was a string. And remember, we need to surround this with a try and catch. Okay, now, just like before, we have a boolean success, which is going to hold if the login has been successful or not. And this is this was defined earlier in the um, PHP file, remember that? So now, if the login was successful, we do whatever is in here. And if it's not successful, we do whatever is out here. Let's start by just making the error first. So this is what the user sees if they've entered the wrong username and password so in fact we can just copy it from the register activity because we've already created an alert dialog before so all we have to do now is just change it to login field and we change this to login activity so that's the error message done now when if the login is successful what we want to do is get the details from the um, JSON response and then send that over to the user area activity and this is how we're going to do that so firstly we need to get the details from the JSON response because remember from the login.php file if the login is successful we get the name age username and password and we put that into the JSON response so now we can actually retrieve that here so um, we want to get the name so get string that will give us the name and then age this will give us the age now that we have this information we want to pass that over to the 
user area activity so we have to create an intent again because we're going to open the user area activity up so just like before login because that's the activity i'm currently on and now we want to open the user area activity and now using the intent we can actually pass some data over to the user area activity so intent dot put extra name so this is going to pass uh the name to the user area activity and we also want to pass the username and the age and then now we've passed all the data that we need to pass to the user area activity finally all we have to do is just actually open the activity so just like before start activity and then we pass the intent just to clarify if the login is successful we get the name and age from the JSON response we create an intent to open the user area activity and we pass all these data over to the user area activity and now the final thing we need to do in this project is actually we need to retrieve the data that we've just passed to the user area activity to do that we just intent and now get intent so this will get all the data that was passed to this activity so the first thing we need to get is the name remember we called it name and the second thing we need to get is the username the final thing we need to get is the age And we give it the age, but int extras are uh, different. You have to give them a default value. So I'll just put a minus one to indicate if it wasn't passed. Now, all we need to do is we need to create the message for the user area. So it's going to be a string, and it will be the name plus remember space. Welcome to your user area. That's the message. Now we need to display the message. So we want to display the message in the welcome message text view. So welcome message is set text. Then we pass the message to it. And then we want to display the username. So et username dot set text. And we give it the username. Finally, we want to display the age. So, so set text. And we'll give it the age. Don't forget to add an empty quote. This is going to convert the age to a string because we can't display an int in a uh, text field directly. Finally, I want you guys to head back to the login activity. There's a few mistakes that I want you to fix. So the first one is, it says get string for the age, but it should be get int. It should be get int. And also you want the type of the variable to be an int. And now this final mistake before we run this program is that we've created a login request but we haven't actually added it to the queue so we have to add it to the queue and the way we do that is just by doing it the same way we did in the register activity but I'll just copy that so I don't have to redo it again and this is going to change the login activity and then put that in there we are done with the Android Studio code for now but there's another final mistake that I want you guys to fix which is in the PHP file I want you guys to swap the age and the username position so the age should come last this is because the order right here should follow the same order in the table so name username age password so name username age password so save that and don't forget to re-upload that onto your um, onto triple zero web host and I think that's it for the program. Now let's try it out. So this is the final application guys. If you remember in the last tutorial I created an account with the username Tony Kami and the password was 123 but I'm going to try 12 now to show that the error message is working properly. As you can see login failed. Now if I enter the right password 123 and click login as you can see, it opens my user area. It has the message to so welcome to your user area, my username, and it has my age. That's it for this tutorial series, guys. Remember, if you had any problems, comment below. 
don't forget to like my Facebook page and also you can also post any problems you have there too and I'll try to respond to as many problems as I can. Thank you guys for listening. Bye.